yeah. something. Well, I think the, the weird thing for me, uh, Ruben, is... Okay, so this is, my, this is my philosophical thought. So you know the notion of social distancing, right? Yeah. I think this is gonna be the biggest impact, at least maybe within our lifetimes, because the, the, the irony is actually even before COVID, we're already socially distant. Like, cause like, you know, physically we weren't as socially distant, but practically we were socially distant. I mean like, yeah. you got all your buddies on the phone, sitting on the couch together. I mean like, you're effectively socially distant, right? But now the difference is that like, you can't be physically, emotionally close to people, but the, actually the irony is, um, so like even with Jeff, right? Yeah. We've been doing the, the Zoom dinner dates. Yeah. Have we told you about that? No, no. So essentially we just uh, open up a, across the street, open up a Zoom meeting and while we're eating dinner, like 7 p.m., right? Yeah. We just, everyone turns on their laptops and we're just like eating the, the home cooked meals and we just kind of chat with each other. I love that. Isn't that pretty cool? I'm going to do that tonight. With, you should. With my fam for uh first night of yeah. Passover. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, it's the first night of Passover. Yeah. Yo, so what is, what is, uh, what are you supposed to do for the first night of Passover? Um, well, ordinarily we would do a Seder with specific dishes and, yeah. and readings, but I think tonight we're just going to do a modified version and okay. to make our own food. But I, I wanted to respond to one other thing you said about, yeah. I, I agree there has been this trend towards social distancing and in yeah. some ways I think technology was a big driving factor yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, people are wrapped up in their social personas and yep. feel less invested in in-person relationships. And yep. ironically now it's technology that is- Bringing people closer together again. Right. Yeah. And, and granting or, in, or combating this enforced social distance. Yeah. So I'm curious, what role do you think that will play Hmm. In the in this as this continues to evolve and uh, resolve, well, kind of a uh, that's 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 really interesting, Ruben. Because like uh, my take on it is, so personally, one of my biggest critiques is just like on technology in general. Yeah. So you think about it, like even um, the okay. So <laughs> totally unrelated. Have you watched a movie Human Centipede? No, but I know or the you gist. Don't, you know the gist of it, right? Yeah. So I think the problem right now with the media and all these things, right, is that. I call it I call it fear porn where like you know you're watching the news and hearing all this shit happening about covid right but everything's just become too hyper it's like almost like like the news right now because the social media and technology it's almost becoming hyper hyper infectious mm. like like if you think about it social media is the ultimate covid right and you know, the way that it plays with people's like serotonin and whatever. Mm. And the reason I call it fear porn too is that I think actually when you, you know, read people dying and stuff like that, obviously it causes a lot of like, like a cocktail of uh, different emotions, like, you know, non and cortisol, blah, blah. But I've actually, actually, there's a little bit of serotonin, a little bit of pleasure that we get from it. Mm. Cause you, cause effectively you're like, okay, another, you know, X amount of people died in country X. You'd be like, thank God that wasn't me. Or thank God that wasn't my family, right? Huh? Let's walk on the rest. So the, there's definitely a fascination there with reading news and updates. I've heard people say that there's, you know, the, there's the viral pandemic, but then there's also a psychological pandemic. Oh, that is that's happening interesting. And, and may long yeah. outlive yeah. the actual viral pandemic itself yeah. and but but it's interesting that you described it as kind of uh pornographic yeah, as in yeah. that it's that there's something almost appealing or addicting about it yeah, what, what yeah, do you mean yeah. By that? well okay so okay <laughs> all right uh what, what's what's your sexual preference I'm, I'm bisexual okay bisexual right so let's say for for the so i'm i'm a i'm a heterosexual so let's say someone opened up a laptop right yeah and then just like strap you to a chair and then, you know, put on some like very sexy porn on the screen, right? Sure. You cannot help but not look at it, right? Okay. So like even for like no matter how good your willpower is, whatever, right? Like it's just in our human nature to look at things which are like dangerous, lurid or like quite extreme. Okay. So if you're reading the news, right? So like, I know that I'm personally not, so I haven't read the news for the last like six years. And the reason I do that is that I know that I don't have the mental fortitude to not look at it. Yeah. And so like, 
even even with uh so with porn it's kind of interesting because it's almost like a bad car wreck you cannot not look like have you ever been on the freeway and all sure. the fucking like rubberneckers who just slow down to see the the car mm -hmm. flipped over so i think it's also pornographic in the sense that there's a combination of virtue signaling that happens with the whole pandemic right now because like you know let's say x amount of people die in italy today there's not really anything functional you could do about it unless you open up your wallet and you send, you know, a thousand bucks to people in Italy for food or something, right? Yeah. So it feels kind of pornographic because there's a little dose of cruelty but also joy in porn, I think. Because, you know, typically when you watch porn, it's like one person dominating the other or being dominated by the other, right? And so my uh, psychological theory is there's always a hint of cruelty and joy in the suffering or pain or the death of other other people. So that's that's my thought on why it's a fear porn because, and then it also becomes this weird like uh, social thing where it feels like your moral obligation and duty to be quote quote informed of what's going on because if you're indifferent to the pain and suffering of others, that makes you a despicable human being who is probably gonna go to hell. Hmm. So look that way. Yeah. It's funny, I've been observing the 20 foot rule for strangers, yeah. but uh, not observing it for friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, um... No, it's, it's, I feel like often... I, no, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I sometimes try not to read the news, but then it, it draws you in. Yeah. And often it's, I, I feel like, especially over the last three years or so, it's been yep. the same thing every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more of the same. Yeah. And now what I feel like makes the news so fascinating and mm. and even more alluring in a way is that it's it feels like it's something different every day. Mm, mm. It's, the, I mean, in a broad sense, it's the same thing, but. Yeah. There's always a different spin on it. Right. And something new is happening, and especially maybe a week or two ago when it was so rapidly evolving, and yeah. it still is, uh -huh. that um, yeah, I would, I would on a conscious level be actually very excited and eager to check the news because I was like, wow, what? Because mm. um, it, it is fascinating, but yeah. uh, but but yeah, there, there's some guilt in that, mm, like mm. like. Am I, um, you know, it, 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 it does feel, to continue your analogy, it feels yeah. voyeuristic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of taking pleasure in, you know. Well, cause like, um, are you familiar with the word schadenfreude? Can you remind me? So it's a, it's a German word, schadenfreude. It's kind of a funny one. 